Hey, Fearly Secret listeners. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about some uh, solo artists that you may not have heard about. Um, first one up is Mark Hollis. He is better known as the singer from Talk Talk. Uh, if anybody remembers, they were a uh, pop band from the 80s. Uh, you might have seen this at your local record store. Uh, this is a pretty good place to start. It has all of uh, tracks from all of these albums. Uh, it's The Party's Over, which most people remember uh, that had the song Talk Talk. All you do is talk talk. Um, then It's My Life, which was another big hit. Uh, the Color of Spring. Uh, that album, that brings me up to this album, The Color of Spring. Uh, the big hit on this album was uh, Life's What You Make It. And Mark Hollis has a kind of a, I, want, I don't want to say Peter Gabriel-ish type of voice, but he has a very unique way of singing. And, um, sorry, I'm trying to get this thing out of my, my eyeglasses. And, um, he just has a really, uh like gentle voice that is soothing and kind of like Peter Gabriel. I'm just going to have to make the comparison. It's too easy. Uh, they were a very poppy band. Um, if you've ever heard the song Talk Talk or Life's What You Make It or... Um, it's my life, very driving kind of new wave kind of, uh, art poppy kind of stuff. Uh, they did that style for a few albums and then along came, uh, Spirit of Eden. Whoops. Sorry about that. Then came Spirit of Eden and they shifted not a complete 180, but pretty close. The music got much more mellow and uh, kind of more organic rather than keyboard laden. Um, the sessions, I guess, they would record in fairly low light to complete darkness with candles around trying to get a mood that did not stop um when they went to the album which was a critic's darling um this ba this album laughing stock was both spirit of eden and laughing stock were pretty much flops um uh, commercially, but I believe critics loved both of them. Um, I know by this time there was only one other member in the band besides Mark Hollis, and that was, um, oh, I forget his name, something Harris, Lee Harris. Yeah, Paul Webb had left by this album, and I guess they had tons of session players that some of their parts were never actually even used. They would do hours and hours of recording just to get um, the players kind of their feel on the album. Uh, this is a magnificent album. It has a, a few, let me see. Um, Mirmon is the, the opening track uh, that pretty much solidifies how this album is going to sound. Uh, Ascension Day also 
is fantastic. And then After the Flood is probably my favorite song on the album. Uh, so after that, Mark Hollis in 1998, uh, let's see how many years it was. Seven years after the last um, Talk Talk album, released this album, uh, his one and only solo album. It was just self-titled, um, but the first song on it is called The Color of Spring. So he's still keeping some of that talk talk connection and i don't think his voice was ever better than on this solo album um the key songs on this are the first three um color of spring watershed is particularly amazing um there's a lot of just acoustic organic sounds on this you know, not a lot of electronics at all. Um, I failed to look at who was playing on this album. Let me let me have a little look. Uh, Dominique Miller actually plays on this album. I believe that is Sting's guitarist from the Soul Cages on. I'm not sure if he still plays with them. Um, Soul Cages was Sting's best album. That should have been called just the best album by sting anyway uh so that's mark hollis uh i think you can still get this used on uh discogs for about eight dollars and i haven't looked at amazon but i'll i'll put some links to the discogs page on all these and um i think this one went for eight bucks so now I bring you to a singer named Jay Buchanan. He put this album out, uh, All Understood, was out in 2003. And if you don't know who Jay Buchanan is, um, he's also the lead singer of the band Rival Sons. This was the second album. I don't have their first album. It has like a lion or something like that on the cover. Um, this is uh, f the album Pressure in Time. The first thing I ever heard from them uh, was the title track. And uh, this band has been hailed by classic rock as the great... Um, classic rock band of this decade uh i don't disagree i don't disagree i think they are fantastic uh jay's got an amazing rock voice uh the song pressure and time is just one solid just amazing grooving song that re really kind of harkens back to, um, you know, some of the more rocking Led Zeppelin stuff or maybe the uh, Coverdale era, Deep Purple. Uh, it has one of my favorite uh, lines in, on this album. He says, I got a pistol on my he hip and a long list of names of people running out of time. I don't condone gun violence, but that is a cool lyric. Um, so, oop, I am kind of getting all discombobulated here. Uh, they followed that album up with Head Down, and the first and only um, video that I know about that came off of this uh, is Keep On Swinging, and... That song is fantastic. Another just cool groove, great vocals, uh, just a lot of energy. Um, these two albums I'm not as familiar with. I'm going to take that down. Uh, this was their third album. 
called uh, what is this called? Great Western Valkyries. This had a lot of cool songs on it. Um, honestly, I can't remember which songs I liked the best on it. It's been a while since I listened to it. And their newest album, also known as Hollow Bones, this thing has an amazing cover. That is almost all I can tell you about it because I've only listened to it once. Um, I know they're bound to have awesome songs on it. I just didn't get around to getting this until recently. And this... I. I'm going to move on. <laughs> uh, back to Jay Buchanan's solo album. So this came out before he was even in Rival Sons. Before, maybe even before that band even started. And um, I heard one or two songs off of this when I found out that it existed. And I was completely hooked. Um, I remember sitting in my bedroom when I was really young, you know, like, 12 to 18 or whatever listening to the same album over and over again and learning all the lyrics and now that i'm older i don't really have time to do that as much uh i listen to a lot of music at work i listen to it in the car uh i listen to music when i go to sleep but you know luckily i fall asleep pretty quick um and this album i got it and I would say I know at least 60 to 70% of the lyrics on it because I listened to it a lot when it came out, or not when it came out, when I, I got it. Um, it's the There was a sticker that uh, Mean Street Magazine uh, had a quote saying it was the sexiest record of the year. Hell yeah, it is damn sexy. Um, it starts with a song called Plans about a guy whose girlfriend has left him and basically made plans without him. Uh, Jay's voice is absolutely at its best on this album. Uh, I love his Rival Sons stuff, but I think he was uh, just not better it's just this stuff fit his voice even a little better than the rival sons uh he has a song called three times colleen where the lyrics are um colleen you look so good last night yeah but we both know wrong from right i would never do that wait wait, wait. let's see colleen you look so good last night. Yeah, we know both know wrong from right. I could never do that. No, never. You can do what you want, but I won't do that to my friend. The last verse, he says, you uh, almost the same thing, but ends it with, she came three times and it cost me by my best friend. I listened to that uh, at work and... My friend and I just started laughing when that verse came or that chorus came out. Luckily, nobody in the store at the time that was picking it up. Um, this version that I have has a song called If You Leave. Um, and it's a different order than uh, a different version that is out there. There's a YouTube version of it uh, where you can listen to the whole album. And... That version has a slightly different running order where plans and then three times clean don't happen. I think three times clean is about the fifth song on there. Um, if you leave, I understand why they took that off because it's, you know, the lyrics are uh, pretty brutal. They're, it's It's about domestic violence and that's the only... Um, downside, but it's coming from the abuser's point of view. And it's, I, the whole time I'm listening to it, I'm like, holy shit, I hope this song gets, you know, a happy ending. It doesn't. Um, 
it's a very odd choice and I know why they took it off because it just it uh, is the one low part of the album I mean the song is good but uh, just the lyrical content is kind of questionable because um, I don't know where what he was trying to say I'm uh, from interviews that I've read about him he seems pretty down to earth and not crazy uh <laughs> but um he has a song called uh satan is a woman uh that is a the, the lyrics are fantastic in that um and then there's a song called american son uh the lyrics for that are God bless the American son. You teach him how to hold a gun. You think your God is the only one. And I love lyrics like that, that question, um, you know, people's take on religion. And it just kind of makes you think. The whole song is fantastic. Um, I don't know if I agree with the sticker saying, uh, it melds the soul of Buckley and the craftsmanship of Joni Mitchell with the raw power of Led Zeppelin. I don't, on this album, I don't get the raw power of Led Zeppelin uh, feel so much, but definitely Jeff Buckley and Joni Mitchell kind of, the just the, the creativity of Joni Mitchell, not saying that Jeff Buckley wasn't creative, but... Um, but he, he, he has a lot of fretless bass, I think, on this. Um, the drummer is amazing. Um, and I just, I cannot uh, suggest this album enough. Considering after 30 plus years of not really listening to stuff and memorizing lyrics, considering I, I know like 70% of the lyrics on here, uh, that's a pretty damn good sign that it's, uh, that it's something you should buy. I looked on Discogs, the version that does not have the one song is about 10 bucks. Um, and that's, it, it's a different running order. I don't like that running order quite as much, but, um, it's a lot cheaper than this one. This version, I think it was going for about $20. So that brings us to the third uh, artist I want to talk about, Andy Reinhardt. I found out about Andy Reinhardt because of, goodness, where is it? I forgot to grab it. Forgot to grab it, people. I found out about Andy Reinhardt because of this band, Polytown, that had Mick Karn, Terry Bazio, and David Torn. Uh, this band I saw at First Avenue. It was one of eight shows. Um, and David Torn ended up... Um, Playing with like King Crimson guys, he played with Tony Levin and Bill Bruford, and um, they ended up uh, I, I lost my train of thought there. Shit. Um, he played with those guys. Then I didn't hear about him for a while, and. Then Polytown happened with Mick Karn and Terry Bazio. Uh, once I started looking into the uh, CMP records, which had a m office based in Minneapolis, um, that I think was why uh, Minneapolis was one of eight places that they played. Uh, Terry Bazio's drum set filled up the whole place. But this is not about Polytown. So, 
uh, Andy Reinhardt on this album, which is produced by uh, David Torn. Um, I'm pretty sure it was produced by him. Yes, it was produced by him. Um, let me give you a little background on Andy Reinhardt. He first started with a guy named Matt Henders Henderson. Uh, he released this album, Walking Home, which is, as you know, a different spelling. Um, this is kind of a bit like Peter Gabriel solo stuff. I'm going to move this. Um, and he and Matt, I think he and Matt Henderson were the two main contributors to this. Uh, they did a lot of um, the keyboards, the fretless bass, guitar. Um, and on this album, he had a song called House of Home and Stone Diamonds, which end up showing back up on uh, Jason's chord. Jason's chord um, was one of the albums that I listened to the most in around 94 and 95. It came out, um, it was recorded in 1991 through 92, and it was released in 93. I didn't find out till like a year or two after it had come out. Um, and it starts out with a song called Being Wrong. And it's kind of, he's kind of, uh, jazzy and kind of world music-y kind of all at the same time, yet being poppy. Um, being wrong, he plays accordion on. Uh, he's mainly a vocalist and a pianist um, or uses lots of different keyboards. Um, this album is fairly, I would say, I wouldn't say stripped down, um, this album is fairly stripped down compared to this. Um, it's, it sounds more like a band got together and wrote these songs rather than, um, just one person. Uh, but you can hear the, con I, it, although they were all written by Andy Reinhardt, um, you can hear each player's contributions um like stone diamond the bass part takes over for what originally was a keyboard part and if you're not familiar with mick karn's bass playing he was a fretless bass player who started with japan he had a bunch of solo albums uh the best two were bestial cluster and earth mother um they were also on cmp records with uh, David Torn on, uh, I think both of them and Steve Wilson, uh, from Porcupine Tree and the guy who remixes just about every prog rock band out there. Um, House of Home also got a reworking on this album. Um, if you are a fan of Peter Gabriel's solo work, especially like later, uh, stuff, this should be right in your wheelhouse. Um, uh, Jason and Martha is probably my favorite song on this. Um, Jones Bones, Pedal Up, Fortune Cookie, Dinner. They're all songs that have just crazy, crazy melodies in them. Crazy lyrics, especially Fortune Cookie, Dinner. Um... David Torn does an amazing job of mixing it. Uh, he uses panning in some ways that I've never heard, where he has the guitar flying back and forth. Um, Mick Carnes fretless bass playing is top notch. Honestly, I'm going to create some enemies here. I loved him way better than Jocko and I, I think Jocko was pretty damn good, but Mick Karn, to me, was the fretless bass player. Um, 
he died a couple of years ago. Um, and it's too bad because we will never have another Mick Karn. Uh, also notable, Kurt Wortman, uh, plays on the drums on this album and he does some amazing stuff. He has a really organic, uh, raw drum sound on this. There's, it's not very processed. Um, there's not a lot of effects or reverb or anything on the drums. Everything about this album kind of looks or sounds like this cover feels, you know, kind of a guy sitting like if you just put all four of the guys in this uh, room, this is what you would get. And it's fantastic. Boom. Uh, my last artist is a guy named Bob Carpenter. Whoa. Sorry about that. Everything is falling to crap right now. Oh, well, I don't edit my videos. I don't care. Uh, Bob Carpenter's Silent Passage. So um, on this album, he had Emily Harris singing back up. Uh, he had her producer. Um, he had members of Little Feet helping him. Uh, Bob Carpenter, I believe, was from Canada. And um, he was a folk singer that a lot of people get confused with another guy named Bob Carpenter. I can't remember what band that guy is in. Oh, by the way, Andy Reinhardt's album, probably around 8 to $10 if you um, go looking for it. And I forgot to say about this, his follow-up was Pillbox. Pillbox was really good. It's more in the vein of... Peter Gabriel-ish kind of stuff, but he plays fretless bass on it, and he is amazing. Um, he's no Mike Karn, but he's really amazing. I tried to buy it from him at one point. He was in Japan, so he told me to wait, and I just ended up having to eventually get it through Amazon or eBay or something like that. But back to Bob Carpenter, sorry. Uh, Silent Passage. So he had Emmy Lou Harris, uh, her producer, members of Little Feet, and this album was recorded in 73. It was supposed to come out then, but he had contract disputes or something going on. So this album stayed on the shelf until 1984, which is a bunch of bullshit because this album should have been uh, just... An amazing classic. It was a few years ago one of the albums, one of the top 20 reissue albums that uh, Rolling Stone talked about in one of their issues. Uh, there was a top 20, and this was in the top 20. Um, it's very folky at times. Um, he was a Canadian folk singer, so of course it's going to be very folky. Um, on this, I would have to say, you know, it starts out pretty strong um, with the song Miracle Man. Then it goes into the title track, Silent Passage. But my favorite song on this album is Old Friends. It's just, it's weird. It's kind of, kind of rocking, yet not at the same time. Uh... This you can listen to on Amazon, or not Amazon, um, on YouTube. I believe you can find all these on YouTube. I don't play samples on here so because I don't feel like dealing with um, people asking me to take my stuff down for copyright and stuff. Um, but this one I know got reissued on vinyl. And just so you know, I am basically a CD guy. Uh, I tried to get into vinyl a few years ago. I don't have a working turntable, so that kind of put the uh, brakes on, on that. Uh, but at that point in my life, I was looking for a copy of the first Rare Bird album. And where is it? Primus. I was looking for a copy of this album. And 
I could only find copies that had Snap Crackle Pops all over them, and I did not want that. What I did want was a copy that would sound good, and I found one finally for $30, and I had to weigh my options. Do I want to spend $30 on one album, or I think this was 15 or 17 or something like that, and it's got bonus tracks, liner notes, and was remastered in uh, 2007 on Esoteric Records, so or CDs. So I stuck with the the CD thing. If I ever go into vinyl, I will just get stuff that has never been released on CD. I have a great turntable that a friend gave me. I just haven't gotten around to. Uh, paying the 60 plus dollars to get a stylus and head shell and whatever else I need on it. Um, anyway, so this was reissued a few years ago on vinyl. And I told uh, one of my friends, Pat, who is a huge uh, Jason Isbell fan, um, uh, Wilco fan. He likes Southern rock type of stuff or alt country, I should say. Uh, told him all about this. He picked it up and loves it. Um, he messaged me just recently, uh, out of the blue and sent me a link on YouTube. Apparently Bob Carpenter had a follow-up album, uh, of demo. Well, let's see. It was six songs, an EP. He had a, he had a follow-up EP that also never got released so you can listen to those on um on youtube and you can listen to this whole album i say start with old friends if that song doesn't grab you that that's probably the most catchy song on the whole album uh i don't like doing covers but i have thought of recording a cover of it and um i cannot remember what i was gonna say Oh, this, uh, this CD version was put out, uh, by a Japanese label, actually. Um, I'm not even sure which one it was. Bella Terra. Um, I got this for $9 at a local store that had a bunch of Bella Terra CDs. And this was the one out of like six that they had there. Um, they are impossible to find. Um, well, not impossible. They're expensive. This one, I believe, on Discogs goes for about 48 bucks or something like that on CD. So it was amazing fine. But you can buy it, buy it on vinyl if you want. I know there's a lot of people that dig vinyl. Um, I just like the convenience and the portability of CDs. So... Um, I hope you liked this video. Uh, if you liked it, press like, leave some comments, uh, subscribe, do whatever you want. Uh, I will talk to you later.